Hi, I'm Rebecca. Welcome to the Crib Knitting Podcast. And today I'm talking about my top eight worn knitted garments of 2023. Hello and welcome to the Crib Knitting Podcast. Today I'm talking about my top worn garments of 2023. I had grand plans to share everything I'd knit in the past 12 months, but that totaled 37 garments, 11 of which were all from the same pattern. And I wasn't sure if that would be very engaging to watch and I couldn't be bothered filming myself trying on 37 different sweaters. <laughs> so instead, I've had a look at what items I wear the most and tried to work out why those are the ones I always reach for. Um, what's quite interesting is that for every single sweater that I, oh, except for one, I have at least two versions of it. So I can talk about why that yarn combination or why that color or what it is about that version makes me reach for it all the time and why maybe I don't reach for my other versions. So I have a lot of sweaters next to me <laughs> and my plan is just to talk through them and I also at the end have six, six learnings that I'm hoping to take forward into 2024 to make things that I'm more likely to reach for. So first up we have these three. Um, this is my Dorney sweater and I have three samples of my Dorney. One and a uh, top and the bottom on it myself and the second one was sample knit and the version that I wear the most is my very first sample so let me put that on. So I reach for this sweater a lot because it is one of my few sweaters that's at this chunky gauge. It's a worsted weight held with mohair. I think it's maybe an 18 stitch gauge and it's warm so on days when it's cold outside I think I have to wear a warm sweater and this one almost always comes to mind and I love it. It is Phil Kalana Peruvian Highland Wool held with, I think Sandra's Garn Tin, is that right? Sandra's Garn Tin Silk Mohair. And it's in this like really nice like caramel colour, which I always think goes with anything else I'm wearing. I like the fit of this one, it's fitted, um, but it's not like super tight. And it's a nice length that I usually just like tuck it into the top of my jeans, little French tuck. And I wear this usually with, yeah, with jeans and like a casual jacket. Um, and I wear it a lot. I wear it on days when I want to be warm. So this is a pretty much a go-to. Yesterday, for example, it was minus one. We were going outside and I thought, let's get on my warmest sweater. And that is this one. I have two more versions. This one, I've just not worn as much because it's newer. And I will say, if I'm going to wear one of them, I just want to wear this one. <laughs> Which is silly. I had a sample knit because I really wanted a green version. But it's definitely not had quite as much wear as the one I'm currently wearing. This one I'm actually going to put on because I think I knit it a little bit too long. So with this one I was going for like a really really classic like cream coloured fisherman sweater vibes and there are two things. Firstly I think my sleeves are a bit short. I think for the oversized look I don't want a bracelet length sleeve like that's yeah they kind of come up a bit short and the body it's quite a bit longer and I just, I don't know, I don't think it fits, like I don't think it's the right look I'm always going for. Putting it on now, I like how it looks, <laughs> so maybe I should wear this more often. I will say this one ended up going to the boat and it was perfect. Um, I took it off because um, we don't have much sailing plan in the next few weeks, but I do think this, would, this is going to stay on the boat. Um, it's quite, it's not super soft wool and this one I just did wool with no strand of mohair. It is West Yorkshire Spitters uh, Jacob's Fleece in Iron Weight. It was lovely to knit up, but it is, it's quite, it's quite crunchy. And I think the more I wear this, the softer it will get, but like, I'm just not committed enough to wearing it day to day for it to get there. So I think, I'm not gonna make any changes. It's actually, the short sleeves are actually really, really helpful for the boat, because a lot of the time I've got like a long jacket coming over the top or I'm doing jobs where I don't want sleeves in the way. So it's turned out perfect for the boat, but it didn't get much more before that. So I'm not gonna make any changes. Again, I usually have it tucked under overalls and the longer length makes it quite handy to like tuck down. And then I get to be a cool sailor wearing a cool knit sweater on a boat. <laughs> so yeah, that's this one. Um, and yeah, the sleeves are not ideal. Doesn't get quite as much wear, but still has a purpose. So yeah, my Dorney sweater, original edition is my most worn Dorney and I think I probably wear it. I don't really wear it at all in the summer months because it's the warmest sweater 
And then I think I wear it like once a week from November to February. <laughs> okay, my next most worn sweater is my Semper, Semper sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl. Let me check it on. So this sweater is a really simple top down raglan. And I will say that there is one reason and one reason only why this is my most worn sweater and it is because it's a black sweater and that is it. I knit this and I think, I think it's drops mohair and another drops yarn, maybe Flora? Is that their 100% wool fingering weight? It's a DK weight sweater so it's fingering and mohair held together. Again this one has shorter sleeves but I don't mind it at all in this version, it works quite well. Um, it's a super simple, like super plain black sweater. <laughs> it is an incredibly poor shape and you can't tell because it's black. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of pilling on the arms and under the armpits it's like almost felted. Yeah, it pretty much has. Like it's like solid bits of fabric uh, here, you can't be able to see, um, but it's like the armpits are like felted solid. <laughs> Classy. <laughs> um, I wear this a lot and I don't think the yarn choice I made is particularly holds up well, well to that much wearing. So my takeaway from this is a couple of things. Firstly, I want to knit it, uh, I want to knit some more black things next year because I reach for it all the time purely because it's my only black sweater and I wear a lot of outfits that I want to wear a black sweater with. And secondly, my favourite yarn combination for long lasting sweaters, which I'll get to, is alpaca and mohair because the alpaca doesn't pill or felt or really wear at all. <laughs> um, someone told me this, it's because there's uh, the staple lengths of alpaca are really short and so they don't have as much friction. I don't know if this is real, I just read a comment that told me this, so maybe I'm wrong. Um, and that's why it doesn't pill as badly and I definitely think a black sweater in alpaca will be great because yeah, this just gets so much wear. There's honestly nothing wrong with it, I'll keep wearing it. Um, but I do think another one, like it just doesn't feel, I always feel a little bit scruffy when I wear this because I, as much as no one can tell, I know that it's all felted <laughs> and hard. <laughs> and I know that you can't, I mean, you also can't see it, but there's just like felt, there's just, I don't know, it's just scruffy everywhere. So yeah, I think a new black sweater next year, and I think I'll knit one in uh, alpaca. I also think I reach for a black sweater a lot because a lot of my outfits I wear go really well with a black sweater. As a knitwear designer, I don't usually pick black for any of my samples because it doesn't always photograph very well. But I do, oh, like this is, like I said, my most worn sweater. So if I had some more things in black, they'd probably get worn more. And Maybe I should think about making like a second sample of some things in black as opposed to in super bright colours because clearly I like to wear black. So yeah, Semper I didn't knit this this year, I knit this, I maybe finished it at the start of the year but I think I finished it at the end of 2023. Um, and this has been worn like minimum once a week all throughout the year. Um, some days like four days in the week. So yeah, I'd say this is like well over a hundred wears by now. And for that much wear, it's holding up okay, but it started to pill almost immediately and it's kind of just stayed in that state. Yeah, I can just like pull off like whole chunks of hair. And the felting is a bit icky. So, love this. Wear all the time. Should look to make something else in black. Okay, my next objects are my Lanark sweaters. Um, and I'm curious if anyone wants to guess which one of these two I wear the most. It is the brown one, it's my original one and there's a really clear reason for this. Let me put this on to start with. Um, my Lanark is a pattern that came out in 2023. I actually finished this sample in December 2022. Um, but the pattern didn't come out until later in the year. I knit this one with yarn gifted by Bare Naked Wools, it's Kent DK. And I adore this sweater. <laughs> Um, I will say, I don't love the colour. I don't think this colour does anything for me. And when I went to Rhinebeck this year, I actually picked up some more of the Kent DK in a different yarn, uh, sorry, in a different colour, in their like beige, it's called wet sand. Um, but what I love about this is 
the drape is perfect. It is warm and cosy and squishy, but it holds its shape really well. And I think it's because the yarn is woolen spun, the one with more air inside. <laughs> um, so it's very light and fluffy yarn, super, super bouncy. And it means that it doesn't feel heavy at all. It doesn't really pull at all. It's super easy to wear and it's super light to wear. And I just love this one. First sample, definitely not perfect. Like there were some things about this one. Like I don't, this is my first zip insertion and I don't think like around the bottom is super, super neat. But honestly, I don't care. Um, I will say because of the brown colour, I wear this mostly in the house. I don't tend to wear it out all very often because it doesn't feel super dressy when it's this colour. But I love it and it probably gets worn like twice a month, I would say. And I think wearing this, I think I'm committing to wearing this more in the house. I think in my head, because I love this sample, I'm like, oh, don't wear it too much because it won't stay good. But I think just knit it, just wear it. And if I ever in the future want another one, I have another twice as quantity of this yarn. So maybe I'll just make another one in the future. <laughs> But yeah, that is my Lanark sweater. Um, I did actually knit another Lanark sweater for my mum in, oh, it's quite cold in here, in Jacob's fleece in the DK. And she wears that one a lot. And I think it turned out quite well. And then I have one to sample knit for myself and I never wear it. So this is the one I had sample knit. It is knit in, in fact, you can tell, I took it to the Scottish Yarn Festival and it's still wearing the tag that I put on all my samples when I went to the festival and that was in August. This one is knit up in, it's called That Orange Feeling. It's Santa's Gown, Stubble Sunday, I think. And you know what, I'm gonna put this on and I'm gonna love it. Yeah, it looks so good. Okay, the reason I don't love this one is, firstly, the colour is bold. Like, it's a really, really bright colour. I've definitely leaned more into wearing bright colours this year, but it is definitely uh, still really, really bright. The second thing is I lost quite a bit of weight this year, probably like two dress sizes worth. And this just to me feels like, not like chic and oversized, but just a bit too baggy. And thirdly is that this yarn is not wool and spun. It's the other one, basically. It's quite heavy. I'd actually be intrigued to weigh this and weigh my other one and see the weight difference because this just feels heavier on. And it always, it never really feels like it's sitting quite in the right place. I told myself I was gonna donate this this year. Seeing it on camera, I think it looked really cool. <laughs> so I think I'll give it another year. I'm gonna try and wear it a bit more. I would wear this one out of the house. Um, I think this would actually look really cool with like a pair of black jeans and cool shoes so maybe I should give it another chance it was sample knit and it was beautifully knit so like I have absolutely no issues with knitting it's, there's no wear because I've barely worn it <laughs> I also think I had pictures taken in this one and I hate those pictures of myself I just don't think I'll, I don't think it's very they're very flattering I hate the word flattering I shouldn't say that word I don't think I look like myself in the sweater and so I think it like puts me off reaching for it because if I look at this, I just look at that picture and I don't like it. But maybe I should look at this because I think on camera right now it looks quite cool and quite fun. And one of my takeaways, which I will get to with other sweaters, is that I should be sticking with bright colours. I learned this year that I'm a cool winter and this is one of my cool winter colours. I think it makes me look like I'm very blown out right now, so you can't really tell. But I think it does good things for like my skin tone and my hair colour. So maybe I need to give this another chance. Play it more often. I'm not gonna wear it today because I'm already, it's the 31st of January today, so I'm going to wear a sparkly top, but maybe I'll start wearing, maybe I'll wear it tomorrow. I feel like a cool girl in this sweater and that's always fun. So maybe I should just commit to that and be the cool girl I want to be. So yeah, my two Lanark sweaters, I guess the takeaway is wear both of them more often. Wear the brown one more home and wear this one more outside. I also have a third one on my needles and I put it on pause because it felt like a spring garment. I don't know why. And I won't touch it. So I will have a third one at some point next year and it'll be interesting to see where that falls in the mix of like all three. Hmm. Um, I should have also said all the patterns, are, I'm not going to put them on screen but they will all be in the description bar below along with the yarn choices that I use for all of them. 
I don't have Ravelry pages for them all. I kind of stopped doing Ravelry pages. I really should. I just haven't done it. So apologies for that. But it's not there. <laughs> um, but I will put it down below. And if anyone has questions about like the size I fit or anything. Oh, I should also say that. I think I did this last year and it was very helpful and I didn't do it this year is measure my bust and measure the sweaters as I wear them. So let me do it for these and I'll do it for all the rest of them. I'm not going to go back and do the other ones because I'm too lazy. Okay, interesting discovery. So my bust in this outfit I'm wearing right now is a hunt bang on 100 centimetres. The red one is 126 centimetre chest so it has 26 centimetres of ease. This one is 108 centimetres chest and so it has 8 centimetres of ease and I prefer the fit of this one. So that's something to bear in mind and I'll be interested with the rest as we go through if there's like an ease. That wasn't in my takeaway. I wrote down some things, my, some learnings and the sizing is not something I considered. So it'll be interesting to see if there are other things that I love that have around about that 8 centimetres of ease that I like in this one. Interesting. Okay, into the abyss. Let's move on to, yeah, okay. Two more sweaters. These are both the Stockholm sweater by Petite Knit. This one I finished last year, maybe even the year before, and is one of my all time most worn sweaters. This one I finished this year. And this one taught me a lot about fabric. So um, let me measure it first. Okay, so this one has 14 centimetres of positive ease, um, which means I definitely size down from what the pattern says, because the pattern recommends like 20 plus centimetres. And I love this sweater. It is super, super, super cosy. It's kind of oversized and fun, but it feels like purposely oversized. I love the fabric, and I think that is the primary reason I love this sweater. It is knit in Drops Alpaca, and Santa's Garden Tinsel of Mohair and the reason I love that combination is the alpaca gets a lot of drape but the Santa's Garden Mohair does contain 15% wool so it's not just like mohair silk and alpaca but there's a bit of wool in it too. You can tell it's been folded up but I don't know if you can see with the lighting it's alpaca mix and there's a really beautiful variegation in there and like I said about uh, what did I say 14 centimeters of ease I will say, I don't love the fit over the shoulders. Um, I don't think I did a super good job of picking up the sleeves. It feels like there's almost like a pleat there. This one is slightly better, this side. But yeah, it does feel a little bit boxy and not in like a super... I don't think I look great in this boxy fit, but either, there, either way, I still wear this once a week and I wear it a lot from home. Like, yeah, once a week at least. I remember the first time at the end of summer where it starts getting cold enough to wear a sweater. This is the sweater I reach for and it just feels like a warm hug. Like I absolutely love it. I love it so much. I made a second version. <laughs> okay, I made it, loved it so much I made a second one. This colour is getting blown out a lot but it fits really quite similarly. It does have about 63 across, so 126 centimetres of ease. So t like 12 centimetres more ease, although it doesn't look like it than the red one. I made this one because I love the first one so much. I made this, it's actually a really nice fabric. Like the colour is really lovely. It is Philcolantilia Mohair and San, no, Retrosaria Pomar, Pomar Mon, <laughs> Retrosaria Rosa Pomar Mondim. Oh, I think I'm squint. There we go. <laughs> I love it. I think it was my one of my first green sweaters of the year and I think it's really nice. I started it I will say it took me over a year to, to, to knit. I started it October 2022, didn't finish it until like October 2023, but that's fine. Um, and I do like this one. I've worn it quite a lot in the winter. It's got the same like cozy throw on vibe, but I will say I'm less in love with this pattern than I was when I first made my Stockholm sweater. And I think it's really just the, the, sh the over the shoulders. I've learned from designing, honestly, how I like my drop shoulders to fit, and I think this is like, not it. <laughs> um, so it looks fun, it's cosy, it's cool, but not, I don't think I'll be continuing with making these sweaters, like this pattern again. I will also add, this one I think, I finished it on October, I think I've probably worn it once a week since. It has about as much wear 
on it, it's a lot of fluffy bits, as the red version, which I've had for like a year and a half. I wear just as much, I felt, this has had a lot of wear. I just can't describe how well the alpaca has held up. Um, mid, like virtually, like there's no felting, tiny, tiny bit of like, a little bit of felting, but even then like, if you can see that. Yeah, like it's, it's so little you can't even really tell. And a couple of like bobbly bits. Whereas this, uh, yeah, is very bobbly. So yeah, really recommend this combination of yarn and anything that's like an alpaca with mohair, I just think is great and I'm gonna keep. I think for my plain sweaters that I wear a lot, I'm gonna stick with this combination because I just love it and I think it wears really well. So from there, I'm gonna move on to two sweaters and actually I can't decide which one of these I wear most. They're my stick season sweaters and these are this drop shoulder fit, but in a way that I actually like to wear. <laughs> okay, so this is my very first sample of it. And I don't know if you can tell, but I just, the shoulders are more, there's still the drop and this kind of like fold you get with drop shoulders, but the shoulder fit, I just like a lot more. Um, it has a triangular, like a trapezoid shaped back where with a Stockholm sweater, you just cast on a big square and then you shape the shoulders from the front down. And I don't think I like that method as much. I don't think it's as flattering. This still feels like fitted and quite, I don't know, I find it so much easier to wear than the other one. And I've stuck with this method a lot since. This one was knit, this is my very first sample. It was knit up in Explorer Knits Non Superwash Earthy DK. Lovely to knit with, lovely to wear, does pill. So I've debobbled it a few times, but it does just get bubbles. It's kind of the nature of very soft yarn. Um, what I will say is it does debobble really easily. So I have just run a razor over it. Like that's what I usually do, just run a disposable razor over the fibers and it comes off just fine. But yeah, you can see like here under the arm and like the boob area, there's a lot of bobbling. Um, I also feel like with the color and with the texture of the yoke, this one feels like my like everyday one. So I wear this a lot, like if we're going for a nice walk, sorry I have an itchy eye. If we're going for a nice walk or you know, like a very casual, like jeans and t-shirt situation, this would be the sweater that I choose. My other one is my fancy one. <laughs> this has 10 centimeters of ease in the bust and I also like that more. I find it really easy to wear and quite relaxing without being like super oversized. So I think that's worth remembering for myself. I like that sort of 10 to 15 centimeter ease bracket or like eight to 14. More than that, I feel a bit weird. <laughs> Let's try six season number two. So this one feels like my fancy one. I don't really know why, well, I do know why. It's knit up with mohair, so the fabric feels a bit more luxurious. And it's super simple. This one does not have a textured yoke, but it still has the shoulder detail and like the underarm detail. This one also has 10 centimeters of ease. I think the length is exactly the same on both, which I think is 35 centimeters from underarm. And I like this. I've worn this a lot with like black jeans or a black skirt and like gold jewelry and it feels like a kind of more fancier, I don't really ever get very fancy, but that's like my slightly fancier option. And I like it. It is knit up with Drops Alpaca. <laughs> this is the point in the year where I realized that I like the alpaca. So it's Drops Alpaca and Knitting for Olive Silk Mohair. I use Knitting for Olive because it was the closest color match I could find. I wasn't blown away by that mohair. It's quite expensive and I didn't think it was dramatically better than other things I've tried. My favorite is Silca Um I think it's the silkiest and the softest. And yeah, this one is a good, maybe like three pounds of all more expensive and I don't think it, it feels that much more expensive. <laughs> um, but no, I do love this. I finished it quite late in the year. So it's not had, I mean, both my six seasons, I finished one in September maybe August and one in November. So neither have had a lot of time to be worn, but ever since they've been finished, I've been wearing one of the two of them at least once a week since, the end of, since they've been finished. 
yeah I think um towards the latter half of the year I kind of got more into um, like I don't know my fashion style changed a bit I got more into kind of like granola girl vibes like I like to wear jeans and t-shirt like a baseball cap and things like that and I feel like the first like, season really was part of that vibe like I felt very much like on brand so I got worn a lot because I felt very cool wearing it which I think is the that's the definition like if I feel like my coolest version of myself when I wear my knitwear that is the best feeling so that's always what I'm aiming for okay we have we're roughly halfway we have one yeah four more we're halfway I feel like I've done more than four one maybe not let's see what's next I do have to I'm going to change into a different t-shirt for my cardigans so let's do my last sweater which is my older sweater and they fall onto the floor so ignore me <laughs> and these are my older sweaters and again can you guess which one is my favorite ah, it's this one and um, this was my second sample and it's quite funny because I almost always prefer my first sample when I design but for this one my second sample one and um, this is the older sweater it is like this slip stitch motif raglan sweater it's got I love it this is like my favorite thing about the sweater is this raglan detail it's DK weight it's like a very very easy wearing shape um, it's a raglan and yeah I've got slightly shorter sleeves all my sweaters pretty much with this length which I think is again the 35 centimeters from underarm and it is knit up in Sonder yarn Sunday morning DK both samples are the yarn for this one was gifted the yarn for this one I purchased and I love them both I think they've worn really well they've both had a lot of wear the red one probably was finished first, so it's got a little bit more wear, and I hope you can see there's like a couple of bits. I do find that with textured patterns, like I find that cables never pill, basically. So I do think when there's more going on, oh, I just got like a whole hair stuck in that. I love that. Like there's just whole bits of sheep. Um, I do find that with textured patterns it doesn't pill as much and so I think these have both had that like I do wonder if it would pill as much in a plain stock and garment but I do find it really hasn't pilled when I finished this one I was 1000% in love absolutely that's the wrong word adored it wore it every day for three weeks solid when I was knitting this one I was like oh don't know if I feel don't know if I like this I'm not sure how I feel about this and now I always always reach for this one I think there are two things one again the pictures we took like the final picture we took for this garment i love the pictures where i'm wearing this one i think i look really like me i think it really suits me i'm less excited about this one i don't dislike it it's just i like this one more and the other thing and this is one of my takeaways is if i'm knitting more than one sample the second sample has to be different enough that i would wear it in a different circumstance both of these i wear the same way i wear them with my jeans my white t-shirt I can wear blue jeans, I can wear black jeans with both of them. It's the same sweater, it's just different colour stories. And I think in other scenarios, I've got one, actually one of my cardigans. They're both so different that there's never a scenario where I've got the same outfit on and I'm thinking, do I wear A or B? It'll have the same look. So I think in future, if I'm making two samples, make sure that the second sample is different enough that it's not competing with the first one when I go to wear it. Otherwise, it's just a waste of my knitting time and of the yarn. Like, it's just not going to get, it's never going to get chosen as first if they will always be able to be worn in the same scenario. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, this one is sample one. It's like this red and pink. It makes this beautiful, like, monochrome fabric. This is sample two in green and white. And sample two wins. I will. Interestingly, it only has four centimeters of ease on my chest, so definitely a more fitted garment. I do think my raglans I prefer more fitted than my drop shoulder sweaters. I quite like a bit of yeah. I find that with a raglan, too much ease sometimes can be like a lot of extra fabric up here. So I do tend to have a more fitted one. Um, maybe that's something I should take away as well. Is I don't currently put much thought. Actually, I can tell you what it is that I do. When I'm designing a drop shoulder, I have to start planning before I cast on and I have to know what the finished chest has to be before I even do the very first, like before I even cast on the first stitches. 
when I'm knitting a raglan, usually, especially one like this where it's quite a small text, like what is a, it's not a very big stitch repeat, I will put it on and I'll knit it until I'm comfortable with the fit. And so what almost always happens is I end up with a more fitted raglan because I knit till it fits. Whereas with a drop shoulder, I tend to go more oversized because I always am like aiming for the 112 centimeter ish, which is what 12 centimeters of ease. Interesting, I didn't think about that before now, but it does mean that my raglans tend to be more fitted sweaters. I love this one, even now I'm like, I wanna wear this today. I just think it looks cool, just love it. I think this is a really interesting texture. I love that up close you can see what it is, but far away, like you're not really sure what's going on. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but that's what I feel. Okay, those are all my sweaters. Um, so yeah, a few big learnings there. We had my older sweater, my stick season, my Lanark. Oh yeah, there were way more than, this is definitely more than eight. <laughs> I can't count. I'll count again at the end. I think it was like 10, maybe. We'll find out. Anyway, let's move on to the cardigans and I'm gonna change my t-shirt into the camisole. Okay, we're into the cardigans and we're starting off with one of my contenders for my favourite thing I made this year. This is my corn cardigan. It's one of the long sleeve versions. This sweat, this cardigan comes in long sleeve, short sleeve, v-neck, round neck. So there are loads of different combinations and I have three of them. Um, one of them I gifted. I did have four, but I have three. Um, and this is one of my two long sleeve versions. And this one is knit in Cascade 220 in the color burnt orange, I want to say. And I adore this sweater. I just love it so much. It's got, um, it's got like, it's got this lace in it. So it's all covered in holes. <laughs> and it's got these cool tortoise shell buttons. And I just wore this all the time. Um, it was really well, it really worked for the transitional weather in Scotland. So it worked for me really well in spring and it worked again really nicely in autumn. The colour I think really suits me. This is one of my learnings about the bright colours. And I just think it fits really well in my wardrobe. Love it. This, I will measure afterwards, um, has very little ease. I think it maybe only has two centimetres of ease on it, but the lace is quite stretchy, so it doesn't particularly bother me. The arms are quite fitted. Again, doesn't bother me at all. And yeah, I reach for this. I wore it mostly every single week in spring and every single week in autumn. I didn't really wear it much after that because it isn't the warmest. It's wool, but it's covered in holes. So it <laughs> doesn't get worn all that much in winter. And another example of when my first sample is not my most worn sample. This is my very first sample. It is made in Knitting Yarn by Pearl Soho, which is the same, they're both Peruvian Highland wool. It's the same base basically as Cascade 220. And I barely touched this one. Now there are two reasons. One is again the same scenario as if I'm gonna wear one of these, this one feels more me and a bit more cool and a bit more interesting. This one doesn't feel the same. The second reason is that a button fell off <laughs> and I've never sewn it back on again. <laughs> so my learning for this one is wear like mend the damn buttons because I will get more wear out of it. And again, like holding this up, I love this color of blue. I liked it a lot. It never gets picked first. If I'm gonna wear a corn, I pick this one. And that is, it's a me problem. I'm the problem. So yeah, maybe I need to make a, one of my learnings should maybe be like, don't always wear the one you go to, like think about wearing something else. But I think because of this, because I wear it in spring and autumn, I feel like, oh, I need to wear it as much as possible because it's gonna get too cold or too hot to wear it. And then I always reach for this one. Whereas if I was a bit more chill and thought, I've got time, it's okay. Maybe I'd wear this one more. Interesting. Okay, one more cardigan and then we've got the big final stack to get through. Okay, this is my Daft Days cardigan. Uh, this has 20 centimeters of ease. It's pretty oversized. It is covered in rainbows and I completely love it despite it not really being like my usual thing. <laughs> so I learned that what I really like a lot is texture. I like some bright colors and some certain combinations, but like I'm not really a rainbow girl. And despite that, this I completely adore. It is the Advent, uh, the 2023 Sadvent, which is a 16 day mini skein Advent from uh, Nervous Fiber and Phil Galana Peruvian Highland Wool. 
and I just love it. It's so easy to wear. Again, I felt, I felt very cool, I felt very easy. I, again, wore it up with a baseball cap and my jeans in the summer, or like in like late summer. Loved it. So this was an unexpected favourite. Um, lots of things about this shouldn't be, like if I, was to, if I was to write down all the things that I love about the sweaters I wear the most, none of the things that I would love about the sweaters I wear the most would be this garment. And despite that, I wore it like five days in a row at one point. <laughs> so my learning from this one is it's good to know what you like, but also sometimes it's good to challenge that opinion and to like try other things. And I will also say this is my last design of the of the year. My second sample is so completely different and I think I nailed it because the person who wears this is not the same person who wears the other one, but like they're both me, if that makes sense. So this is my second sample. Um, this one was sample knit for me. It is an Isagur Jensen, black and white with these gold buttons. And when I wear this one, I'm a fancy lady. <laughs> so I like to wear this one with like, like this one, like my hair is up in a clip or in a, in a, in a cap. I'm wearing my blue jeans, I'm wearing trainers. Like this one, I'm wearing like my black, like smart jeans. My hair is down and probably like curly or like done. Maybe wearing a bit more makeup. Like I feel like this girl's going somewhere. This girl's just hanging out. And I think that's the way I want to try and go next year when I'm gonna make more than one sample. I can't continue to keep making loads and loads of samples of my designs because I will run out of space and there are already some that I'm not wearing very much. But sometimes I do want to make a second sample because it shows off the versatility of the pattern and it means I can wear them more often. And like this for me is the perfect example of that. So that's my takeaway. Try, like push the boat out a little bit and like don't just be tied to the things you think you like, but also if you're making a second example, like the second girl is a different girl. <laughs> and this is my perfect example of that. Something that I also love, which makes this a very special garment, is that this was my charity pattern release of 2023. By the time this video was live, like it's probably the end of the purchasing window, but until midnight on the 31st of December, all proceeds from this pattern go to the Fistula Foundation and I've raised almost 15,000 pounds. And that's just a huge amount of money that's gonna change lives. So it always is kind of like a special garment. I think um, it makes me feel even, it makes me feel great wearing it because it was like a good deed thing as well as just something I really love. <laughs> so yeah, that's my daft days. Honestly, I love them both. And I think I've probably in the past month worn this one more because I've had more like things to go to that, wears it, that I wear this to. But like I say, I wore this one five days in a row and absolutely loved, like I had to tell myself to stop wearing it because it was getting ridiculous. So last but not least, Uh, they're not all here, but I knit 11 Tulsa tees this year. Um, here's, actually no, I didn't even knit this one this year. Here's a little sneak peek. Which one do we think I wore the most? It's the stripy one. <laughs> Again, this was I think my first ever sample. Oh, I just realized as I'm filming this, I've got one next door that I didn't even include in this, but. This is, I think, my first ever sample of the Toolsta. It is knit in a woolly knit cotton held double and it is held off incredibly well. This was worn like every single day of the summer, pretty much, like at least three times a week all through the summer. Um, I love it. I think it's super easy to wear. The, the, the drape on this is beautiful. I will be knitting summer things this year again in the same yarn because I just absolutely loved it. Um, I put this to the wash quite a few times. I don't really wash the rest of my knitwear, I just like, hand wash them. These went in the wash like quite regularly and they look exactly the same as they did before. And there is like, look at that, that looks like it's just been knit. Pretty much zero wear and tear. But I do have more Tolstas and I thought I would do a quick wrap up of why some of them get worn more than others. So this one is a woolly Tolsta. I knit it for the Scottish Yarn Festival at the end of end of August, is that right? It's a tricky combination because right now it's so cold that I want to be wearing full sweaters. And in the summer, I reckon it's gonna be so warm 
that I'm not going to want to wear a wool t-shirt. But it's not really had its time to shine because it's only been cold pretty much as it finished. So we'll see how this one fares in a year. Uh, this one I adore, but I find it a little bit tricky to wear. It is the one that is, it's got a pico edge and it's got this beautiful lace pattern. And the reason I find it hard to wear is I feel like my through the holes, my bra is really obvious when I wear this one. And so I think I have to wear it with something underneath and I never want to do that. So either I have to get over myself and just be aware that I'm semi-flashing when I wear it, or I need to start wearing it with a t-shirt underneath. This is my first ever sample before I even started writing patterns. I love this one, but it's a bit of a washed out beige color. <laughs> so I like it, but it's not my favorite color. This one is in Drops Bell and I do love Drops Bell. You can see the drape on this. And yeah, this has also been worn many, many times and looks pretty much brand new. So held up really well. This one <laughs> is my red silk one and it is too short. It barely even, like you can see, even without that, it barely hits my jeans. And I like them to be a bit longer so that I can tuck them in. And this one is not long enough. So I need to go back and add some length. I have more of this yarn. I just don't have the patience. And potentially when it gets warmer, I'll have more, like, I'll be more motivated to finish this. We are going away in April to New Zealand. And I feel like this would be like a good one to take with me because it feels a little bit fancy. It is pure silk. It's knitting for all of pure silk. But it's been worn like twice because every time I wear it, I think, oh, I'm burying my midriff and I'm always thirsty. I feel too old to do that. So yeah, needs some length. And that leads very nicely onto my second one that needs more length. This is my fingering weight holster. It is too short because I'm too lazy and I don't want to add more length because it's fingering weight. But it is, it is a crop top. It's even shorter than the last one. It is like many stripes shorter than this one. So it only gets worn on, worn on very, very hot days when I feel like I want as little fabric as possible. And I live in Scotland, so we don't have many of those. And last but not least, my favorite and most recent one, is that the right way inside out? And what I'm gonna wear today is my sparkly Toolsta. This is knit in mohair and a strand of Stellaris from Kremke. And you can see it's a little sparkly. And I love this. It was super easy to wear. I wore it Christmas day. I wore it with like a black skirt. It felt quite fancy. I think you could wear it. I'm gonna wear it today with jeans. And yeah, I love this. So it's my most recent one. Doesn't quite count as the most ever worn. This one definitely wins. However, yeah, I'm glad I made it. No regrets. And I wouldn't change anything about it. Other than the fact that there aren't many days in the year where I reach for a sparkly outfit. <laughs> Christmas day and new year. And that's about it. <laughs> so with all of that, I have some takeaways. Here are, the f here are the six things I wrote down. Let's see what they all are. Did I cover them all? First, of first and foremost is knit it longer. I think that's especially relevant to my toe studs, but like a general rule to myself, I like 35 centimeters between my underarm and the bind off and don't be lazy and cut it short. True samples, question mark, true different outfits. If I'm gonna make a multiple, sam like multiple samples of the same thing, I feel like the Tolsta is different because I wear these all the time. Like this is like a cotton t-shirt for me. So this one's probably rolled out and probably the same with some other summer wear, or particularly for sweaters and cardigans. If I'm making more than one sample, don't just knit two samples that like I would wear to the same thing. Make sure that the one offers me something different. Number three is bold colors. I know that I'm a cool winter. And if I look at the ones that are left on my I've got like a bookshelf of knits. If I look at the things that are left there that I didn't pull out for my most worn sweaters, it's a lot of beige. It's a lot of like muted colors. Clearly the ones I'm wearing the most are my bright colors and I should lean into that. I like wearing bright colors. I should be up with scared of bright colors and I should knit more bright colors in 2024. However, my next point is knit somewhere black. <laughs> so bright colors and black. Um, Oh, this is a good one actually, which I didn't really talk about. I kind of did with the Lanark, but I'm quite fussy about yarn choice. And there are some things where I don't like what the final yarn made the pattern feel like. 
Like for example, the Dorney feels very heavy and feels very weighted. So definitely swatch. I realized that the second half of this year, I became a bit like obsessive about swatching. And I think it's a good thing because it means that I've, I've found consistently the past few projects I've finished, I feel like it was made for that pattern. Like it feels perfect. <laughs> so, and to keep up with that, keep the swatching going, make sure I'm sold on the finest, finished piece. And last but not least is push the boat out. I think my uh, daft days was a real example of this, but here are all the things I've learned about what I do and don't like in my patterns. At the end of the day, one of my favorite knits of the year was something that is completely different from anything else I like. So continue to be adventurous and try new things. And with that, that's a little wrap up of my most worn knits. I'd be really curious to know what you reach for the most. Have you done this? Have you like evaluated what things you wear the most and what things you wear the least? I'm curious. And yeah, now I want to go and wear everything today. So I need to go work out. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to wear my black sparkly top because it is New Year's Eve. Um, and I'm excited to try and wear some of my other things that I tried on today that I think in my head I don't like, but evidently I put on and I actually do like. I hope you enjoyed. Um, and yeah, I'll be back in a couple of weeks with, maybe next week, with a regularly scheduled podcast. Have a great start to 2024 and I'll see you soon.